Ladies, welcome to another incredible client interview. I wanted to just introduce you to a woman who is an absolute badass, super bold, feminine, powerful. And not only does she show up for herself in a really incredible way, but she shows up for so many women all over the place. Uh, Jessie is just an incredible powerhouse. Not only has she been able to create an incredible show called Whiskey Wednesday, um, but she's also been able to create community, um, to pour into people, to show up really, really powerfully and make people feel important, feel seen, bring attention to uh, issues in business that we need to be focusing on and providing incredible resources for us so that we can have access to things that we might not have access to prior. So I want to just introduce her. She's a mom, she's a wife, she's an incredible woman, and uh, you're going to freaking love her. So glad to be here. Thank you, Kayla. You're welcome. I, uh, I'm not as great as a host as you. I feel like I need my cool little microphone that you have because you do this all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's a little microphone. Um, but I just, I love you and I love, you know, what you're trying to do here and the community that you've created as well as being a part of our community. Um, but I did not do your show justice. So can you explain to everyone, you know, who you are and like what you do and why Whiskey Wednesday is so freaking epic? Oh, Kayla, thank you so much for saying that. That means the world coming from you. Um, but Whiskey Wednesday is a show that is less about whiskey and more about sales and marketing alignment. And I feel like my red light's making me look all sunburned, but I thought I'd put on my red for your show. <laughs> but yes, we focus primarily in the B2B space and I try to bring on thought leaders in sales as well as marketing to really talk about alignment. So it, it gets into a lot of different things. As you know, there's a lot that goes to sales. There's cold calling, there's outbound email, there's community. And um, especially these days, there's so much that sales and marketing people can do to align. Because as we say on Whiskey Wednesday, the best salespeople are marketers. And wow, you're an exceptional example of that, Kayla. I know so many people in your community who are paid members who have told me they were sold before like they even got on the call with you. Um, you know, like one of them I was literally talking to this weekend. She said, you know, I didn't even want to have to have the call. I just wanted to pay to sign up. <laughs> and so, you know, you are an exceptional example of a salesperson who is a really great marketer. Um, and there are a lot of really great marketers out there who are also salespeople. And mm -hmm. we just get into all those conversations and the overlap of them and what it means to be in sales in the 21st century, what it means to be in marketing in the 21st century. And yeah, yeah we have fun. Yeah. And I think that you're downplaying a little bit. You have, you know, thousands upon thousands of people that watch your show every week. Right. And um, I'm just like really, really proud for what you're doing and what you're creating. Can you explain something to us? Because we talked about the 21st century sales, 21st century marketing. And I definitely have my own perspective when it comes to us consumers like evolving and wanting more and wanting things different. Like, what do you think, you know, is the main issue that people are experiencing right now, whether it's sales, whether it's marketing? When it comes to this new generation, when it comes to like people uh, evolving and expanding, like because sales has definitely changed over the past 10 years. What are you seeing on, on your side that you can give us some insight on? Oh, great question. There's so much we could unpack there, but um, I would focus on, you know, people connect with people more so than people connect with brands. And I think that's only going to become more and more prevalent as we move into the age of like Web3 where literally all of our online activity is going to be like tied back to us in our personal wallet. So like, even though I may work for this company, I am still representing them as an individual. And as I am buying and purchasing things, I'm doing it with other individuals. So I think for salespeople and for marketers and for companies, I think personal branding is going to be key. And it really is something that we always come back to on Whiskey Wednesday too, is because you know, everyone's on social media. So you need to have a personal pres presence, whether you're in sales or marketing. Okay, so let me ask you a second question. How important is it for you to have authenticity in your personal brand, like your perspective? That's that's really where like, you're gonna be able to stay ahead of the, you know, curve. Cause I just got off this podcast, the sales and AI podcast actually. And he was asking sort of the same thing is like, how do we stay ahead of this? And it's like, whoever can, 
continue to be the most human and be a pattern interrupter because AI is going to continue to catch up to whatever we do. Yeah. I was given examples of like how I create content on LinkedIn, even with AI. Yeah. And I know some things that AI can't do. So I know how to make it look human. And but pretty soon AI will figure that out and then I'll have to find a new trick. You know what I mean? So like we just have to stay ahead of it and always being and looking, appearing authentic and wow. showing up in these apps native to them. You know, like if I'm in LinkedIn, I don't want to be given a link to Facebook, you know, so you want to build for natively for the app and the ecosystem that you're in. Yeah, no, I agree with you. And I, I, I talk about you using a personal brand if you're a sales rep. Right. I feel like so many people like, oh, I don't want to be in front. I don't want to be in front of people. I'm telling you, especially when things cost so expensive and you're in high ticket sales or you're in really high B2B sales, like people are going to look you up. Like it's yeah. just what it is. If I'm spending six figures on something, you know, I'm going to look up your LinkedIn. You know, I'm going to look up and see if you're legitimate. I'm going to do my due diligence if I'm in B2C and let's say I'm spending 10 grand on something. I'm going to do the same thing with the rep that I'm talking to. And the thing is, is that sometimes what I see is that maybe you don't want to show up on social media. And then I look at your profile and then the picture is like you holding up a fish or like it's something really far away and you look like you're not a real person. You look like a bot. You haven't posted in five years. And it just puts some type of um, liability like attached to it. It's like this could be a concern. This mm -hmm. could be a liability um, versus if you are showing up really powerfully, right? And let's say you were talking, I used to be doing social media sales, right? I wasn't an expert in social media, but every day I got on my story and I talked about social media and how it was important because I wanted to know if any of the people that were following me were like potential leads that at least I can capture those people because they felt like I knew what I was talking about because I was showing up as that person. I hope that makes sense. That's how you found me. I literally just watched your TikTok and it closed the trust gap with me. I was the same way as this, the other person in your community I was talking to this weekend who was like, I was sold before I even talked to you. I love that. That's so good marketing, cool. Kayla. That's so cool. Well, I think, okay, so talk to like, let's say there's somebody here right now, right? That, you know, you, I love you in terms of you having the ability to show up. Not a lot of people can speak like on stage essentially right? That's the, one of the number one fears in the world. People are more scared of speaking publicly than dying, you know? So how, like, what would you say to somebody who's watching, who is possibly, you know, in sales and is like, Hey, like I want to show up more powerfully online. Um, maybe like, what are a few things that they can do that would make them look more legitimate? That would be helpful. Um, that are not too scary. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I would say first and foremost, Focus on LinkedIn because in a professional atmosphere, that's the social media platform that most people are going to go look for. Like, yes, they're going to see your Instagram. So make sure you have a decent photo up there. Yeah. Um, but in terms of LinkedIn, think of it as like the personal website of you. So you get a cover image that is like the most important. So like make it count. Put your value prop in your in your value in your cover image. Let me know what you do and who you serve in five words or less because people are busy. So like the, the faster you can get that message across, the better on your LinkedIn, um, you know, make sure that you have a headline and it's not just like your job title. Um, and you know, there's one dynamic part of your LinkedIn profile and it's your activity. So the posts that you're making. So ideally your post isn't from like a year ago and you have something that's a little more recent and you're not just a robot. You're not just sharing stuff from the company you're working at. You have three content pillars that are well thought out. These are things that you want to be known for, things that you do, things that make you human. So mm -hmm. that's not going to be the company you work at. And if the company you work at is smart, which right now there are a lot of individuals who want to be active on LinkedIn and they don't because they're afraid to because some companies don't see the value in it yet. So that's sort of where we are, like in terms of like 21st century marketing yeah. um, is like those companies that empower and equip their sales teams to have a professional personal page. Those are the ones who are going to win out because, as you said, people, their buyers are going to be looking at them. And so like there are things you can do on your personal page to make sure that at least when they land on the personal website of you, that's how you should be thinking of it 
that they, they're going to have somewhere to go to. It's probably going to have a link. So if you have creator mode on LinkedIn, you can put a website in there. So okay. like, where are you sending your viewers to? You know, you want to think those things through. But um, yeah, I would say the cover image is probably the most important because when they land there, that's what they see. And half of the people are not even going to scroll down any further. Yeah. No, I think that it, LinkedIn is important. I think that people that don't want to be um, multifaceted on terms of like social media platforms are missing opportunities, right? Like even if you just get in there and just be consistent, do like one thing a week or like just get in there a little bit, it's really, really helpful. Um, I A few years ago, I was reviewing about 40 pitch decks a month um, to see if they would be credible for investors. And the first thing they had me do, um, and it was like for a big, big company, they had me go and look at every single social media platform that this company would have and see uh, any discrepancies, right? And the first thing that they were doing is seeing like how many times did they post or like this company doesn't even look active, right? And the thing is, is that when you're a sales rep, like you are like your own business, you're producing money for yourself, you're producing commissions. So it's like, you need to show up powerfully. And the best way to do that is like, hi, I'm alive. Hey, like, now, please don't like politically like throw up all over your, um, you know, page, like use a little bit of common sense. We don't want to be too biased because we don't want to be a liability when it comes to, you know, losing or gaining sales, um, unless you're selling for a political campaign. And then maybe I would be doing that, <laughs> you know, making sure that you look um, safe. It's a good word. You look safe to and trustworthy in order for somebody to be giving you their credit card or wiring you the funds to be able to give them whatever result, you know, you're representing. Um, I want to talk about the community that you've built because your community is super cool. And not only do you do your show, but afterwards you have like a little like get together, um, which I don't see any other show doing that. And it's brought such um, a reoccurring base of people coming into your show because they feel like they're a partisan. They feel like they're a community and family. Um, and that's what I pride myself on, you know, like, our community and an elite saleswoman feels like a family. Um, so I would love for you to talk about, you know, your community that you've built and then your experience that you've had over here as well. So I can hear your perspective. Oh yeah, absolutely. I love the topic of community. I feel like that is another thing that is not going to go away. It's only going to become more popular as we build personal brands, because I'll be honest, like if you look at my LinkedIn, you'll see that I get a lot of engagement there but it's primarily because of what I do in community. Mm -hmm. And so like when I think of community, I think of, you know, groups that I'm in a um, sales, one of my favorite communities is actually a sales community besides yours. Um, and, you know, it's really because salespeople tend to be people who understand the importance of personal branding yeah. um, a lot more than marketers, uh, surprisingly. Um, marketers can be scared of personal branding sometimes because they can see it as a liability as some of the things you were explaining, but Community to me is so important because that's, you know, you'll find different communities based on different niches. So like I'm in a SaaS sales community and they specifically talk about outbound email. So it's like very niche. And that's a community in WhatsApp that I've built a lot of great relationships on. One of the sales calls that I was telling you about, it came from lead a lead out of that community. You know, it's just you... You get to know people on a different level. And I think of community too is like, it kind of reminds me of like a chat room, like back in the day, you know, you'd have like a chat room where it's just like an endless flow of conversation and there's just always people there talking. So like, and then if I have a LinkedIn post that I want people to go visit, I can drop it in the community and people who are engaging at that moment might see it. Mm -hmm. So like there's that community, there's my community, Reveting Whiskey Wednesday. I try to get people to come share their wins. Like it's a safe place to share your wins, people. And it's surprising to me how controversial that can be because a lot of people are like, if you're always winning, there must be a problem. And I'm like, well, Ooh, that's interesting. Yeah, I know. I get so I get that. But like, no, I continue to push like, let's share your wins, whether your win is like you took 20 minutes to like take a bath and relax. Like that is a major win. Or if you like closed a six figure deal, like that is also obviously a win. Um, but yeah, I have a couple channels. My community is built in Slack. So I have a live stream accountability channel in there. I have a women's channel in there. These are all sales and marketers in the B2B, primarily in the SaaS space. Okay. Um, and then the general room, which is where we're sharing our wins because it's Whiskey Wins Day. Oh, I love that. 
I, I think that people get to share wins, you know, um, people get to have the chance of having their voice heard. And the problem why people have a hard time with that, from my experience, is that um, most people don't have the experience of what it's like to really be seen. Mm. And it being okay to be seen and to be heard and to be validated and to be worthy of whatever they're talking about, right? So um, like shifting that experience for people, I think is, is really, really powerful. People feeling permission to voice whatever's going on and people cheering them on is a mindset shift that gets to happen. Um, what is your experience like from our group, from our community? Like how has that, you know, changed stuff for you um, in terms of, you know, women in the group. I know that you went and visited, you know, um, one of the women in our group this past week, Susan, she's awesome. She's been on here as well. So how's that experience been for you? Um, does it feel close? Does it feel community? Does it feel like family? Like what is the experience like? So I can understand how supported you actually feel. For me, it's been really healing. Mm -hmm. um, just coming out of, um, originally in my career, I started in politics. So one male dominated field yeah. to tech, which I went into the B2B SaaS started in 2015, always sort of doing the same thing, like email marketing, social media, um, but primarily male dominated industries. So wasn't around a lot of other women and, um, coming into your group, it was exactly what I needed, um, just to be around other women, because I'm not around other women, I'd say in my life otherwise, but women who have this same desire to want to grow and better themselves and make more money and mm -hmm. being okay with making more money. And, um, you know, also being moms, like there are a lot of moms in that group. And so being in the Midwest and being a mom, you know, I don't really fit in in a lot of groups because a lot of the moms meet during the day when I'm working. And, you know, <laughs> it's just like, I've never been able to go to the, the play dates and stuff like that. So it's nice to have a group where I can connect with other female entrepreneurs and saleswomen who are out there doing the same thing as me and it's okay. So it's been really healing for me. Mm. And that's what's so interesting that you said that, Jesse, about like feeling like you can't go to the, the daytime things. I'm in Scottsdale here and, um, I went to like one of my daughter's like dance classes. I was like, oh, do y'all have anything for adults? Or like we do it every morning at 10 a.m. And in my mind, I was like, who can go to that? I tell you. Oh, right. And then we were like doing Pilates that early and like, oh, I'm like, I was supposed to wake up, I was supposed to get my stroller, and I was supposed to go to the dates, which is like I never had that luxury of doing anything like that. And it is mm -hmm. mind blowing to me. So I fully understand where you're saying, like, how do we get to feel like we're connected to something when you're a mom and you're working? Because the other moms don't get it, right? Like right. I'm pissed off at me because she has a play um, at school. And instead of going to her play, I'm taking her to Miami for Mother's Day weekend. And she's so upset because now she can't be in the play. I'm like, which battle do I do? Like, you go to the play and I can't be there. Or we go to Miami, right? So um, relate to you so much on, on that aspect. And um, I think that we get to create a, a community where you have permission to be okay with making money, to be okay with being a mom and working, to not be so guilty all the time, you know, and having people that see you and pour into you and love you, like you get to have that. Right? You get to have that. And another thing I really love about your community too, is that you really encourage us to acknowledge each other. Mm. And that's something that like, man, I've never really been like told to go out and acknowledge other women, like really in society, we're like kind of pitted against each other a lot. Mm -hmm. And so it's, that's another thing that feels very healing, like literally to my nerves. I feel healing, healed even saying that because I left one job in the last five years where I literally left there with shingles. I was 35 and I had shingles, which is, I got it from being overly stressed. Um, it was just a very masculine environment and I was doing everything to stay on top and I was excelling. Um, but I was just so stressed out, but like, so like I, I can feel like those nerves and like how my anxiety, like even to this day, you know, it hadn't really gone away. I would say until like I was able to come to this group and it really like healed my nerves and my anxiety. I've gone to therapy. I've gone to a lot of other things, but sometimes, and even my therapist had suggested, you need to find another community of women like you. Mm. And, um, 
that was when right around when I was like finding about find, learning about you. And wow. truly like, so for me, it has had health impacts um, wow. because it has that something that women need that men apparently don't, you know, and it's not something that's ever really existed because, you know, women are still pretty new to the workplace. If you think about history, you know, mm -hmm. and there's just something extremely healing about it that allows me to like step into my confidence, take a deep, it's okay to take a deep breath. Yeah. You know, it's also, it's just, that's the thing is it's just, it's okay to slow down. I don't have to know everything. I don't have to talk mm. super fast. Um, and it's just, man, I don't know how else to say it. It's just, it heals my nerves. That's what your program has done for me. Well, no, I, I really, I really appreciate you, Jesse. I think that uh, a lot more women get to experience something like this. You know, I'm excited for you. I know that we're rewriting your script to go after, you know, SaaS companies for sponsorship. So that's really cool. Um, having Jimmy being able to write that out for you. So I'm excited for you to be able to experience that and, you know, excited for you and your journey and what you're creating when your heart's in the right place, like you, you flow, you know, when you are filling your cup up so much where there's overflow, you can pour out. Um, when before without the overflow, without, you know, being supported, it's like you're on a lonely Island on a hamster wheel, not going anywhere. Right. So it's sometimes it's like we have to heal a little bit to get to a place to where we can start, um, taking action again, you know, as well. True. This is what happens to you. Um, where can everyone find whiskey Wednesday? Cause now we've been baiting everyone. So where can everyone find whiskey Wednesday? Um, and is there anything else that you want to leave for whoever's watching right now? Um, well, if there's anyone watching who is looking to join a program to help them level up their skills, but also like feel actually connected to a program. So as you know, on Whiskey Wednesday, I come across all kinds of sales coaches, all kinds of just like sales professionals and they're all amazing. But there's literally something magical about your program, Kayla, for women. And it's the fact that there's nothing else out there that sort of takes this like approach of healing, you know, trauma that we don't even realize we have yeah. um, to help us get to a place where we can have that confidence to go into those sales calls like the badass females, sorry, baddie females that we are. Oh. And so like... Where you can find me, Whiskey Wednesday is every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern time. And it's reveting.com. So R-E-V-E-T-I-N-G, which is revenue and marketing mixed together. So reveting.com. And you can find all the podcast channels. So I'm also on LinkedIn, Jesse Lezak. My name's on the screen. And you can find all my episodes there. We'll be live tomorrow at 9 p.m. I love it. Yeah, guys, her show, it's like a game show. It's the coolest freaking thing. There's like a Karen that comes on and I can't ruin it for you. It's just so good. So um, for my ladies that want to, you know, enjoy um, somebody else pouring into them once a week, you know, Jessie is freaking awesome. Go check her out. Um, also, if you are trying to get, you know, your marketing or your sales experience and stuff out there, she does host some people on the show um, or allow, you know, you to be able, if it's in alignment with, you know, our values and everything, her values to be able to possibly sponsor for her to get more eyes on you and your services and your products. So again, that's like, if it's in alignment with the values, it's not just, yeah, she could do it. Um, so make sure you reach out to her personally. If that's something that you have, if you have type of product or service that'd be beneficial for salespeople or marketing people, and you want more eyes on it, Jess is going to be your girl to get that out in the world. So send her a message her way. Um, anything else you want to say? I, I honor you. Thank you so much for being here today. Uh, Jesse, you're a badass. And I'm excited for what you create. Same with you, Kayla. Thank you so much for having me on. You're welcome. All right. Bye, love. Bye. Bye.